But I think for our way of life, our constitutional system, our freedoms, th that it's really the, the, the Sharia supremacism that's so rampant in the Muslim world that we need to be concerned about. So if you look at the five largest Muslim populations, Sunni Muslim populations in the world, the majority sect, 77% um, want the Sharia to be the law of the land. If you look at places where we were involved, like uh, expending much blood and treasure, in liberated Iraq, liberated Afghanistan, 99% in Afghanistan want the Sharia, 91% in Iraq. Even Iran, where you know there, there's some residual of a secular society, at present 83% want the Sharia. So if, you, if you're drawing from that pool of people, of course you're going to have a, 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 an overwhelming share who, who would want to implement the Sharia. It's just natural. Do you feel that uh, uh, President Obama has an agenda uh, to uh, cover up for Islamism? Well, I, it's hard to say whether he has an agenda to cover up for Islamicism, but I would say is that we could see that he's clearly taking policies that are friendly to the Muslim Brotherhood. And in doing that, he's brought them into the organizations much more than President Bush ever did. And when that happens, we end up relying on their inputs to make decisions that our national security have a national security implication. And my great concern is we've frozen out people who are actually professional intelligence analysts professional national security analyst who would have come up with fundamentally different pictures. So uh, that, that's how I would answer it. We look at Muslim attitudes towards the Sharia in this country. We have polling data uh, from, from 2012 and then again in 2015. In, in 2012, when Zell Associates, uh, they were doing surveys around the time of the presidential election, basically as part of a data analysis to see uh, who, who Muslims would vote for. And it was accurate in the sense that it predicted, as, as it turned out, that they would vote overwhelmingly for, for Obama's re-election. Uh, but they also asked attitudinal questions. And 58% uh, of U.S. Muslims in this sample, and they were high socioeconomic status Muslims, um, said that, that criticism of Muhammad should be illegal and, and should be prosecutable. 32% uh, were even willing to admit that Islamic blasphemy law should be applied, uh, i.e., you know, imprisoning, killing someone for quote unquote blaspheming uh, 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 Islam's prophet. And about, I think it was 33% felt that they wanted the Sharia to replace U.S. constitutional law. When we fast forward to 2015, Kellyanne Conway, who's a very well-known uh, pollster, very respected pollster, uh, she found that 51% of Muslims in her sample wanted the Sharia to replace in whole or in part U.S. constitutional law. So these are not uncommon attitudes, particularly, uh, you know, they're, they're not obviously as high as 99% in Afghanistan, but they're alarmingly high uh, in, 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 in a modern era in, in, in the United States. You contend that the, that the West is winning the war against global jihad. In what way do you feel that's true? It's not just that we're winning, it's that the enemy is making it obvious who they are, what they stand for, and how they mean to destroy us. And that means that those who deny it in the West, the ones who are spreading the lies, are bound to lose. But have they uh, mollified us through uh, allegations of uh, racism? They've tried to suppress it, but again, every lie eventually must fall. And the whole Islamophobia scam, the whole claim that they're the victims, the more they attack us, the more that lie falls apart. How about the Democrats who allege in the same way that uh, they try to, that if you don't support Obama, you're a racist, that if you uh, don't support uh, Hillary, you're an Islamophobe and people w will feel inhibited at election time? That's a great analogy. And again, increasingly you see people turning against it and rejecting the whole concept of it. Are we seeing that reflected in the mainstream media? The mainstream media is the organ, it's the propaganda organ, it's the machine that keeps the lie alive. You're seeing it among ordinary people, you see it in grassroots, and you see it in places like this, where even politically unengaged people come, and they learn, and they come back to their communities with a new message. We are pretty clear, we're pretty sure that there are Muslim Brotherhood associations, affiliations inside our national security apparatus that serve as consultants and stuff like that. I'm, I'm comfortable saying that. I think that what you're seeing is in Washington, they're starting to have to react to the population that understands there's a serious problem. I think what you see with Trump is Trump is, is someone who's captured that feeling. Even I, I'm not even sure sometimes he understands everything he's writing right now himself. But so yes, I think people are starting to be aware of that. I think it's because Al-Qaeda and ISIS 
the Brotherhood have stepped up their program and it's now in the public view in such a way that they, people cannot, cannot walk away from it. In that regard, I think public attention is, is going that way and we're going to see it escalate. Uh, I came here today in order to say that uh, I think that Europe is in a very bad shape but uh, that America can still fight back against uh, the threat of radical Islam and uh, can avoid the sad fate of Europe as it is now. I explained that Europe is not only confronted with uh, attacks, terrorist attacks, but also what uh, the Muslims call Dawah. Dawah means invitation, and uh, it's an invitation that you cannot refuse. Uh, I, I compared it with uh, the way mafia, the, the mafia invite people uh, to accept. And uh, I could say that uh, Europeans are on the verge of complete submission. You could see it in the media, you could see it in politics, you could see it in culture, you can see it in uh, everyday life. Uh, Europeans are threatened by radical Islam and uh, they don't know how to fight. They are completely brainwashed, almost completely. And so they choose to submit because they see no other solution and they see that no one will help them. Politicians will not help them. They risk to go on trial if they criticize Islam. Uh, they have nobody to help them. And it's impossible to express the ideas that I expressed today here in Europe. If I was saying what I said today in Europe, I could be in jail or at least have a heavy fine. So here in America, I know that I still am in the land of the free and that I can speak freely. I hope it will last and I'm here in order to fight for freedom and for the future of America because I don't want America to become what Europe is becoming. But between Trump or, or, or Clinton, what do you see as the future if Clinton wins? Well, I think we'll see, with, if Clinton wins, we'll see an acceleration of what's happening. I think if we see Trump win, we're going to see some disruptive activity where he's going to try to stop this and we'll see how things escalate or how they don't. But I, I definitely think that what, what's happening with Trump is there's a, a definite uh, uh, worldview that wants to seriously change course from what we're seeing going on today.